Hello and welcome to my channel, where are the guides for photography. Today we are inside Luminar Neo and we are going to deal with this image. Now I've developed this image inside O1 for Raw and it turned out pretty great actually. And I'm kind of uh, curious if I could get this image to look uh, nearly as good as the O1 image. So we should just get started. Uh, one of the challenges in this image is that the shadows are really dark and the highlights are really bright. And it's going to be a balancing act to get that to look good together. And the image is pretty noisy as well. So we need to denoise uh, the image a lot. Let's just start inside the develop raw module and we are going to drop the highlights and up the shadows. And I think that looks good as a starting point. Now I can go in and try and set a black point uh, and a white point. So let's just pull that down until we have a fairly decent black point. And I think that's fine. I don't want to pull it down too much because then I need to lift the shadow sliders and it's going to be a, too much back and forth, I think. Now for colors, I'm not going to touch too much, except I'm going to introduce some magenta. I can like magenta in a scene like this, and I'm going to leave it around there. We can always go and adjust for that later. All right, so let's actually drop the highlights even more here. Something like that. Yeah, should we do the crop right away? Uh, let's just uh, do the optics first. So auto distortion corrections and auto fix chromatic aberration. And that's fine. I don't think we have any fringes going on, so I can leave that. And let's go up and do the crop. And I'm going to do a two by one crop that makes the image look a bit more panoramic and I think it looks great for scenes like this because we have such a huge foreground and I don't really have want to have this huge foreground so hence that's the reason why I want to create a panoramic feeling so in enter custom aspect ratio I'm typing in two and one and as you can see, that uh, creates sort of a panoramic effect. And let's pull it into somewhere around here because I want to have the light in the thirds. And let's try and move it up a bit like that. So the sun is actually also closer to this third. Uh, I think that might help the composition a bit. So let's go for that. And yeah, that's pretty good actually. Uh, let's go into the colors and I'm going to try and uh, make this maybe more over to the reds and orange. Uh, but I don't want to go overboard because then we suddenly have this... Uh, P color look and I really don't like that look but let's try and go through the colors anyway and let's move the orange more over to the reds and that kind of looks good but let's see what happens if we move it even more and I think that looks pretty interesting let's see I don't think I actually need to move the yellows but let's see anyway and move it or over even more so this is without this is with yeah i think i'm actually going to leave it over there and already i think we have a much more interesting sun area here all right let's go for no actually let's move the cyan more over to the blues and the blues more over to the magentas somewhere around there maybe and let's go into saturation and let's add some saturation to the orange and to the yellows like that 
and maybe even the blues. Now I'm actually going to do a color adjustment just for the sky. So I'm going to leave it like this. I'm just going to boost the saturation in the magentas. All right, so let's have a look. This is where we started and this is where we are at. And that's already a pretty interesting look compared to where we started. Now I want to go into landscape and I want to see what happens if we use golden hour there. I think maybe it's going to look a bit too fakey, but let's try anyway. And I actually like that a lot. So this is without golden hour and this is with golden hour. And I think I'm actually going to leave it there. Now, the next thing I want to do is uh, this light is far too blue for my taste and it's a bit too dark. So I'm going to go into develop and I'm going to add some exposure to that light and I'm going to add a lot of whites to that light and drop the saturation a bit. Let's actually drop the exposure. Maybe it's enough just with the whites and maybe the shadows as well. All right, so I'm going to paint that into the light. So go into masking and brush. And let's move up to 200%. And as you can see also, the image is pretty noisy, but we are going to try and fix that. And let's... Uh, Paint this in here. I don't want to paint or desaturate the red top. So I'm going to try and avoid that. And I'm going to bleed out a bit to the sun and uh, free line the mid ground. But I'm going to paint uh, or clean that up. So just painting where I want to desaturate. And I'm just going to do a rough mask. I'm not going to spend too much time doing this. I don't want to drag out the video and make it last like for a lifetime. <laughs> and you can see that we are bleeding out here on this side. So I need to go for erase and try and clean that up. So just doing something like that. And it's the same over here as well. And as I said, I know the mask is a bit rough, but uh, yeah, that's the way it is. Okay, uh, let's go for adjustments. And I also want to do noise reduction on the lighthouse there both for color and luminosity let's uh, add some more yeah and i think that's fine it's going to look uh, better at a hundred percent yeah that's uh fine and let's do fit the screen and let's take a look this is without painting the blues out of the light and this is painting the blues out and uh, denoising the light. And that works pretty great. Uh, the next thing we should do is add a new develop and try and denoise the image a bit. So if I go for luminosity and this is uh, there's not too much details to look at in this image uh, anyway. So if I denoise it a lot, it doesn't really matter. It's going to soften things down, but uh, there's no true interesting details there. It's only the color and the difference in color and the tonality that is the interesting things going on in this image. At least in my opinion, but let's have a look at the sky and the mid-ground. And yeah, uh, let's uh, denoise it even more. And the color as well. Yeah, the denoise tool inside uh, Luminar isn't the best, but 
yeah, it's fine. It's good enough. All right, so <laughs> I think maybe I want to lift the shadows even more here. Yeah, let's try and do that. And yeah, I think this is actually pretty interesting. Uh, this is not looking uh, too bad, actually. I'm going to go for erase and I want to remove this dust spot. So let's increase that. And let's just paint that out. And, uh, and let's try and remove this lens flare as well. And hit erase. And I'm sure I'm missing some dust spots. I could use the remove dust spots tool that usually does a pretty excellent job. But yeah, yeah, there's something left over there, but I'm not going to care too much about that. Now, what I want to do now is to soften down the water just a bit. So let's go for structure AI and into masking. And I'm going to hit the AI mask and it's going to calculate and find the different parts of the image. And hopefully it will identify this part as uh, water. So let's just hit the AI mask button. Right, and let's hit the water button. And it did a pretty good job. So let's just go for adjustments and let's drop the amount a bit. Let's just boost it. And this uh, does indeed soften down the water and I really like it. So let's just hit this one. This is before the softening and this is after the softening so yeah i'm pretty happy about this and uh, now there is yeah we could try the golden hour just a bit more here and that's pretty good yeah now there is a bug inside luminar neo uh, that when you crop the image and you want to do the vignette after it actually doesn't consider your crop. So the vignette is as if you wanted to vignette the whole image instead of considering the crop and start from that point. So if I go down on the amount, you can clearly see the vignette and what it does. And if I go down on the feather, you're seeing that yeah, it, it looks really weird right now. And if you go for shoe subject, that usually centers the vignette. And yeah, that's fine. So the vignetting tool, you should know that it's a bit buggy. Instead of the vignetting tool, you could try with the develop tool and use the radial and invert the mask. Uh, and darkening outside the radial and that would uh, do a pretty good job as a vignette but I'm just going to try and see here yeah so this is without the vignette and this is with the vignette and I can go down on the size and that will actually help a bit as well I could try the inner light but I'm afraid I'm going to blow the sun even more but let's just try it and yeah, it looks kind of interesting. So this is without the vignette. And this is with the vignette. And let's increase the feather just a bit and drop the inner light just a bit. And let's have a look at before and after. So this is where we started. And that looked pretty boring, actually. And this is where we are at. And I might do some dodge and burn and I would maybe drop the exposure just a little bit and maybe even try to tweak the colors a bit. Maybe make the sky a bit more <laughs> bluish. But I think it's a fine result, uh, especially thinking we went from this to this. So the software did a pretty good job. 
and I'm pretty happy about this image actually it's uh, pretty interesting I would clean up uh, around the light hair make my uh, mask <laughs> and don't bleed out to the sky but yeah that's uh, something that takes maybe a bit of time so I'm not going to do this in this video now if you like this uh, video hit that like button that uh, would tell me that you want to see more Luminar Neo videos. If you want to watch more videos from me, hit that uh, subscribe button. And finally, if you want to buy or try Luminar Neo, hit the link in the description. That's an affiliate link that will give me just a small amount of money and it's not going to cost anything extra for you. So that's a great way to support me. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. And I hope to see you again. Goodbye.